Man, I know there are trade rumors. I know there's the LA Kings, and I know there's Dallas, and I know Klingberg has been sort of linked to Vancouver in some conversations by some NHL media people, but like, give me this opportunity. Give me this video to just go out there and gush about my favorite team for all the critiques, for all the criticisms, for all of the negativity that I have spewed about the Vancouver Canucks over the past few weeks. I still admit, I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs. I don't know if they're good enough to go on a run. I don't want to see the team do well to the point where they're in the playoff race and then they just end up barely missing it by the time the postseason comes around, thus devaluing their draft pick. It's a whole bunch of mixed emotions as a Canucks fan right now because they're supposed to be a little bit better than they had performed under Travis Green, even though the roster that Benning assembled as his all-in last hoorah type of roster just isn't good enough in a lot of people's eyes and in a lot of analytical models. Like, Oh, man, give me this opportunity to take a break from all of the, okay, trade Miller, trade for a draft pick, trade for prospects, get these young guys to come onto the team, Brock Besser trade rumors, qualifying offer this and that and the other thing. Let's take a break from that and actually just start talking about only good stuff here. Because when it comes to JT Miller and Elias Pettersson, boy, have these guys absolutely shown up in the best way possible over the past few weeks. Let's go over onto JT Miller and see where he lies in the NHL in terms of total points right now. With his four-point night yesterday, two goals, a very nice snipe on Markstrom, and then a penalty shot, as well as his two assists, he is now up there with 57 points in 51 total games played. Do the math, 57 divvy 51 multiplied out by 82. Miller is on pace for 92 points in this season over 82 games, and that is with the terrible Travis Green first 25 games of the year. Wow. JT Miller wasn't really particularly bad throughout any point in the season, like, to be honest, even during the Travis Green days, he was still scoring the lights out, but... Now, just taking a look at everything holistically, he is on pace for a 90-plus point season, which hasn't been achieved by a Vancouver Canuck since gosh darn Daniel Sedin in 2011. Actually, Henrik had 90 points that year, too, so there you go, two of them. But is it just me, or is JT Miller, like, legitimately the best player, the best forward at least, the Vancouver Canucks have had since the prime Sedins? Like, I get it, Rodham Verbata was over here, and he scored 30 goals, he's the last 30-goal scorer the Canucks have had, and that was in 2014-15, so seven years ago. But, like, even that time, there was still Henrik and Daniel feeding him passes, and it's kind of the reason why he even got 30 goals. But, like, ever since then, you know, JT Miller has been probably the best forward on the Vancouver Canucks since those Sedin twins were in their primes. Heck, the best player on the Canucks in terms of the overall seasons, if you want to go back to the 70-ish point Sedin marks from 2015, was JT Miller two years ago in 2019-20 when they made the bubble and everything. That JT Miller scored 70 points, and yeah, I mean, that hasn't really been done all too much. It was the first time in however many years it had been since somebody on the Canucks scored 70, and it was Henrik and Daniel who did it last. And you take a look at where Miller is in the NHL point race right now, I mean, he's top 10. Huberto, Dreisaitl, McDavid, Matthews, Kondra, Goudreau, Ovechkin, Kaprizov, Rontanen, and then JT Miller. Ah, oh, dude, Alexi Lafreniere, I'm telling you. I'm telling you right there. I'm kind of just memeing about that, by the way. Nobody go out there and take me seriously. This guy's legit. Like, you're not going to get JT Miller for Kerfoot and Hall. Please, anybody going out there and talking about JT Miller in any sort of trade and bringing up that Kerfoot Hall nonsense, I'm already tuned out the second Alexander leaves your mouth, or in the case of Twitter, when I read Alex, because that's kind of, you know, how it's formatted. It's all written over there. But JT Miller is legitimately one of the top players in the entire gosh darn league in points. And you're going to tell me that this guy's going to go for Kerfoot and Hall or whatever. Or this guy's going to go for a whole bunch of scraps like Philip Sheedle and Will Coyle. It's not going to go down that way, man. Premium assets. Premium quality assets right here. Jack Eichel had neck problems. Jack Eichel had surgeries to do. Jack Eichel was already frustrated on a team that was bad and that was very eager to go out there and sell this guy out in the market. JT Miller is on a Vancouver Canucks team that doesn't feel they have to make this trade. If anybody's going 
going to step up and anybody's going to actually make a trade for Miller, they're going to have to give up assets and they're going to have to give up picks and they're going to have to give up prospects. They're not going to have to give up Kerfoot and Hall. So stop with that. Now, going on to Elias Pettersson, because I wanted to talk about him as well. Man, who would have thought that Elias Pettersson would have gone out there and pretty much laid everything down on the line in the media a few days ago? Yeah, I had my wrist taped up, I didn't play hockey for eight months, I started off the season cold, and now you take a look at where Petey is, I mean... Oh boy, look at this game log right here, man. Obviously, the three-point night yesterday is great. You see the two goals he scored, one of them an absolute bomb of a slap shot on Jacob Markstrom, and then the second one was the short-handed breakaway in the third period. Beautiful play. Even better shot dynamics. You saw the way he leaned into that wrister. My goodness, what a play. And then, of course, the assist he had as well. But Elias Pettersson in the last four games played... He has 10 points, two assists against San Jose, three points in the 7-4 loss against Anaheim, two assists against Seattle, and then three points, two goals and an assist against Calgary. EP40 is finally back, and, you know, with 37 points on the season, you look at that and you say, okay, well, he's on pace for 57 points over 82 games, which... I mean, it's not great compared to what we've seen in the past out of Elias Patterson, 66 points, 68 games... In 2019-20, 66.71 games in his rookie season. He's on pace for a pretty bad year, but, like, if you remove the Travis Green games, you remove everything that he did in the first half of the year where his wrist was all taped up, Pedersen had 12 points under Travis Green. So half a point a game on pace for about, let's say, 39, 40-ish points on a season of 82 games. Not great, but, like, still... Remove 12 points in 25 games from Pedersen's current point log, and the guy is out there with 25 points in 28 games, and that's just the full 28-game sample he has had under Bruce, not really counting the previous stint where he's gone absolutely ballistic. We pretty much said this Cam Robinson tweet on air yesterday, or not on air, oh my goodness, why do I say on air? <laughs> Throwback to the radio days, eh? But... Elias Pettersson has 10 points in his last four games, 13 in his last seven, 20 in his last 16. The horrific start is dead. It's gone. Elias Pettersson is back. And that 20-game sample is good enough to keep Pettersson in the same company as Dreisaitl and McDavid, so you'll love to see it, eh? And... I don't know, where do we go from this commentary now? Like, isn't it crazy how a lot of Vancouver Canucks Twitter was so adamant on giving up on Pedersen earlier on in the year. Like, sure, I kind of danced on his grave as well. I'm not going to go out there and make it seem like I was the all-seeing eye who expected this to come back. But, like, even though I said that Pedersen is not playing up to his contract, even though he wasn't doing well earlier on in the year, there was always that idea, you know, there are two years left on the contract, we know how good he was before, and we know that he is getting older, he should be developing properly... Even though there are games where he absolutely sucks and he's like a really big shade of his former self, you see the flashes once in a blue moon. You see one play or one pass that he does where it's like, oh, that's the old Pedersen right there. You could see him trying to fight his way back. And even though I criticized his gameplay, we all know what I felt on the inside. You know what you felt on the inside. We all wanted him to do well. And now he's doing well. So... Yeah, everything that has made him so dangerous in the past has started to really manifest over the past few weeks here. And just watching Pedersen today is a lot different than watching Pedersen when he first arrived to training camp after signing the contract, or excuse me, not to training camp, just to the locker room in general, because I think training camp was already over. Just watching how he plays, how he perceives things, and how he shoots, and how he dangles, guys. Oh, man, Elias Pettersson is back, baby. I love to see it, don't you? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this video over here. I get it. I know that there's an entire trade debacle going on right now, and that any second we could see somebody get moved, or somebody get sent away for draft picks, or somebody going to a contender. Maybe that's Miller, maybe that's Besser, maybe that's Bo. Who really knows? But for now, in this very small moment in time, February 25th, 2.31 p.m. as I'm recording this audio. I just want to go out there and be very grateful for what we saw last night and what we've been seeing out of some of the best and most talented Canucks players we have had in a long time. JT Miller is literally the best one since Henrik and Daniel Sedin. And I don't think that's up for dispute anymore. So, talk to me in the comments on your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99.
and bye.